this is uh, this is the Dragon's Den. I come here about once a week to uh, to engage in trade and barter and comics for toys and CDs and uh, and other collectibles. This is what we do. Uh, I give them to him, and I trust him to give me a fair price, and he always does. And then I get stuff. So, shall I hand them to you, Mr. David? Oh, sure. These are the better books. Ooh. Where'd you dig this one up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to know. That's why he's the nickname Eddie from Chicago. Yes. Boy, you were like pulling out on me. For for years and years, when I came here, we'd we'd open the Overstreets, or we'd open the Wizards, and this is something that I want out in the comic book community, and it's very important to realize that when you look in a price guide, and I'm sure Dave will back me up on this, when you look, I'll back him up on that. He'll back him up. I don't know when what he's saying, but I'll back him up. When you look in a price guide, some variant covers. When you look in a price guide, that's the third time I've said that, and you see a price, even for a modern or recent comic book. And it says the book is worth twelve dollars. That book is an estimate based on in Overstreet's based on the top twelve or fourteen retailers of comic books in the United States. The problem is, if this McFarlane cover of Batman, um, if it says that this is worth six dollars in the guide or ten dollars in the guide, that's probably a misnomer because Dave, how much could you sell this for in the store? Ooh, that would be a three or four dollar book probably. okay if this is a three or four dollar book that means Dave and I only engage in trade can only give me a dollar fifty or two dollars in trade for this book so when you go and sell comics into a local comic book shop you have to be aware that what it says in the guide and what an actual reputable dealer can sell it for are two different things entirely because of the advent of trade paperbacks that's been a big change. That's killing the back issue market. I mean, why would you pay $20 for this when you can get a trade paperback collection or an Essentials Fantastic Four for $19.99 that collects 20 different issues, including this one? So... Makes good sense for the comic book companies because they make money on the trades. What don't they didn't make money off of? Ah, uh, back issue, yes. So now what we're going to do is, now that Dave's taken a look at the books... I'm going to do my best to rip them off. He's going to do his best to rip them off. Whatever no, if you want. Right. But whatever whatever <laughs> he offers, I'm going to take regardless. And then um, Great, at, this point, okay. Okay. at this point, I usually walk around the store and look for stuff that I might want and trade. The first thing that I'm going to grab while I'm here is 25th anniversary gear. Joe figures, Cobra Polar Assaults, and this is the only one that I couldn't find in the real tip retail pipes. Um, I have all these already. That's the second appearance of Death Strike. That I've never read before. Um, one more from cover number one. This is a very strange collection. Over in Origin. Um, Indiana Jones. Ultimate books are always pretty good. X-Men, Blue Beetle, not so much. Star Wars, the kids all seem to like the Star Wars. Wow, these are really stinky comics. Those aren't good at all. The problem that I have with, with collectibles is there are things that I know, like G.I. Joe and Transformers and Star Wars I know, but there are some lines that are on the periphery, like I'm writing this new book on, on 80s toys mm -hmm. that the contract is, I think it's due February 2nd, and it's on all 80s properties. So thanks to Joe and Collector's Realm, I have the Strawberry Shortcakes, and I have a lot of vintage Star Wars 12-inch figures, regular figures and vehicles. Mm -hmm. And now, slowly but surely, I'm trying to pick up, the, pick up some of the LJN wrestlers. Oh, the LJN wrestlers yeah. that are 
I mean, those, those are in beautiful condition. Yeah, you want to try and find ones that dogs haven't chewed. Or right. They, they haven't rubbed them on the concrete outside so their noses are all shaved off. Right, right. Yeah, they're but all tough. The, the, the paint job figures. always comes off on those. But, yeah. Yeah, the ones you picked up were nice. And when I come in, you know, I come in for, what, an hour and a half, two hours at yeah, a pop? Yeah, you should see When I come the in, I, we, we sit around and, yeah. you know, bullshit or whatever. I always see the people, the same people coming in, and the first line out of their mouths, did you get any new blah blah, insert yeah, your, into, yeah. your favorite line in. And that's good because that means they're always going to depend on, depend on you for that. When they could go to Evil Bay, when they could go to, <laughs> you know, Big Bad Toy Store. But because it's reasonable and, you know, just, just now you were talking to that lady, you don't sit behind your counter like the typical, sorry about this, if this is you, don't do it anymore, please. <laughs> sit behind your computer, looking up stuff on the interweb, and uh, just chilling out. You actually interact with the customers, and you want, you want to help them. And that's, you know, that's what it's about. This is my favorite, dis well, I hate to say it, it's my favorite display case in the store. Well, I yeah. think it's beautiful because you have... You have the Rey Mysterio masks, you know, you have um, beautiful signed stuff. Hacksaw Jim Dugan signed, you know. He was at one of the first signings. He was, yeah, he was one of your first signings. Two by fours, um, you know, Hogan heavyweight championship belts. Um, what I may have to get today, we were talking about this earlier, is I may have to get some of the, uh, the LJNs. LJNs. I may have to get a couple more LJNs because, you know, you have them. And it's so just you. easier. Uh, the, the Coco Beware with the Frankie is... Yeah, that's nice, that's right. Good. Well, the thing about it is not too many of them came with any accessories. Right. So you, and you'll the find Coco, on that are, but you'll are find Coco, immaculate. but you'll, you'll be missing Frankie. Yeah. You'll find the... Frankie's the parrot, by uh, the way. <laughs> the um, Honky Tonk Man won't have the guitar. Right. You know, but for the most part, Hulk Hogan didn't have all well, he had the belt. But majority of them didn't have any accessories. Right, right. Just a big and that's rubber, and that's the cool block of rubber. Well, and, and <laughs> Joe knows that when I when I do these articles and these books, you know, it's it would be easy to put the Iron Sheik in there and Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan, but you want some of the harder to find pieces in there because you're not just appeasing the casual fans. You want a collector to look at the the opening image and say, oh, cool, he cool has. He has yeah, some of the... In, the... in that series, it's the, it's the last series, the black, yep. black carded series. You want that Ultimate Warrior, you want a few pieces I, from that. I would like the Ultimate Warrior. I would like the Ultimate Warrior. But, and eventually, eventually I'll get it. But you know me, I'll, I'll try and complete every toy line if I can. Um, anime stuff, yeah. McFarlane Monsters, um, Akira, Spawn, lots more Spawn. G.I. Joe, 25th anniversary, 12-inch Joe, Sigma Sixes. Uh, McFarland's lost. Hey, they didn't sell very well anywhere. No, no, not anywhere. Really. Um, DC Direct stuff. Actually, we, you should look some of these up. You some want me to tell me that? Yeah. But why don't I you? Know, because I sell it. For Justice Wonder. For I know. I know. Yeah. Um, Marvel Legends. Marvel Legends box sets. Newer Marvel Legends. Oh, there we go. When we're when we're at the uh, the um, storage space, I have a bunch of Charlie Brown figures that we'll we'll go through. <laughs> Great Pumpkin. I got some of them here. Little stuffed animals, well not stuffed animals, stuffed characters, um, Marvel Famous Covers, old school crappy Toy Biz figures <laughs> with the Wolverine with pop-out claws, some more deluxe figures on top, Hulk Hogan foam fingers. And because I'm trying to build up my wrestling section for my 80s book, I got an Iron Sheik Iran, great face, look at that face, Honky Talk Man with a guitar, uh, unfortunately just like every single specimen that you find there's a little purple showing through they use the darker color yeah, plastic for that and one. that's the problem they did use the darker and it comes through in coco beware and with frankie with frankie and my favorite i have to say this you love those my favorite the the bella sarah horse cards for little girls um and it says the latest for the latest promotional that um if you complete the whole set of bella sarah cards of the second series uh, if you go online and log in, they will mail you three free pounds of horse meat. Um, but thank you, buddy. Uh, thank you. Very, very much. Thank you.